Four weeks ago, we took 11 candidates from across the country, away from their friends and family, and brought them to Kapur Estate in Wicklow. This promises to be an exciting journey for each one of us. Coming down here is a big, big step for you. All 11, although diverse in age and background, all share one common denominator, issues with their reading and writing. My bank manager never knew I couldn't write. My accountant never knew I couldn't write. I don't want to be different. Like, I want to be able to spell and not be embarrassed. You can take what you like from everybody that sits down and talks to you, but it's yourself that's the teacher. Well, how the company have started to listen and to learn. They all have their own individual stories to tell, but their shared aim is to bridge their gap in literacy, which has held them back thus far. Happy days. Cheers. Happy days. Cheers. It's week five of this intensive reading and writing program. Every weekend, each student is away from home and families. And for some, the strain is beginning to show. We're a month into it. Motion's running high, running low. Everybody having their work during the week and their own lives. And then to come here the weekends and to pack everything in, as in regards all the activities, the learning. It can be stressful, you know, and it's just very, very challenging physically, mentally, and emotionally. Sitting in that classroom, you're learning all the time, and you're taking in the meaning of words and everything like And the hours that I spent over there means more to me than anything, because for me, it's I'm getting away from home to be on my own, to prove to me that I can do this. Because, I mean, I love being at home with my family, but I felt smothered at the same time because I couldn't let none of them go. But now I have a feeling that I'm here and I don't even have to get the phone every minute and start ringing them, you know, which is brilliant. And I was doing that when I came. I will see it through till the end, definitely, because I'm getting something every time I come down here. You know, it's bringing me that closer to that goal I have to, to spell properly and, and have the confidence to try a word. Like, I'm at the improving in me writing, like, uh, it's at the getting neater because it was all over the place and I never used to like me writing. But now, like, I'm down here practising all the time writing. Me family and all have seen, like, that I have improved. Not really me friends because, like, only some of them know that I'm down here and, uh, you know, they don't really know the full gist of what I'm doing down here. So they keep asking me and I just keep saying, and I'm just working for RTA. <laughs> I feel more secure when I'm here than I do out there, you know. I don't know what it is. Is it because of the other students or what? Or is it you know, a stronger foundation when we're together? Can I say strong enough, you know? It's can I, can I do it when I haven't got all of you around me? That's, that's my problem. That's what I'm thinking about. The students' ability to stay strong after the course will hinge on the new confidence levels they've achieved. Stephen O'Neill, counselling psychologist, talks to the group about getting rid of negative thinking. So what I wanted to do initially is I'll talk a bit about self-talk and then we're going to look at um, positive self negative self-talk and positive self-talk. Okay. Now, way back when you say you're in school and you're open and you're in fact quite vulnerable to what people say to you. So if you have a situation where your teacher or your parent or someone close to you, someone important to you, has turned around and said to you, you know what, you're not very clever, are you? Or you're not very good at maths, or you're not very good at reading. You can't spell. And what happens in a, in a way, you start then saying, you start doubting yourself. Doubting yourself then that it's probably true. True, OK. Now, I know, I mean, I have one. I mean, we all have one. It's called an inner critic. Right? An inner critic, right? So it's what's happened that we've taken on board all these things that have been said to us and we start believing them, saying to themselves, right? I don't know if I quite get it, but my one that sticks to me was I was told I'm only good for sweeping the streets. That's a line from a script. You're only good for sweeping the streets. 
<laughs> so you have to test the validity of that. I mean, is that true? No. It's not. It's not true. You know that. You know that. There's still, you have that doubt in your Well, mind, that's, you know that's when mean? we'll get to the point where we now have to counter that in your head. We have to put that, we have to, put that to rest, that you're going to use a positive self-statement in order to counter this, okay? Italian-born Andrew has changed jobs frequently all his working life. He's had many business opportunities. Motivation and self-belief have always held him back. Hey, what's the story? Not too bad. Being a young lad when, when my dad passed away, I kind of lynched on to, or latched on to Maurizio. You know, he would be kind of an icon, as in I was only the small little guy, and he'd be coming in, he'd be doing the work, and he'd be looking at him, and there could be a queue outside that shop. 50 people, and Morris there, not a bother, and hard work, you know. Oh, school, how are you getting on? Ah, tough, man. Tough? I told you, you know. For yourself, every day is a learning day. Is it? <laughs> but fair play to you anyway, you have courage to come back. Andrew always dreamed to own a shop to himself, you know. And I, I always say to him, if I could help, you're more than welcome. So I have a premises next door there that's so occupied. But we always thought, you know, if I had that place back, you know, how would you feel having a pizzeria or a coffee bar or something, you know? A lot of, a lot of hurdles to climb first, but it's a good venture. And anyway, you start coming in and do a bit of work here, you know? Uh, you always help me. Well, it's the fear, man, you know, it's the fear, of get, the fear of getting back in there, you know? But... You need a willpower. Uh, willpower. Also a good business head behind, behind me to give me the drive to do it. Well, when you're on your own and you have so much paperwork and you have nobody to confide in and you don't really trust anybody, because that's another thing with this, what I find with me being dyslexic, I find it very hard to trust somebody. All right, see you anyway. It's nice to see you again. Ciao, ciao. Call in some other time. Anyway. Do I see myself on my own business? That's a good question. I see an awful lot of things after this. You know, hopefully business will be one of them. If you put the elastic band on your wrist, depending on, are you right-handed or left-handed, whoever? So when you're doing this six times an hour, yeah. this negative self-talk, okay? Six times an hour. I want you to catch yourself doing it again. You're going to be aware of it. And give yourself a little twack, okay? A little twack, all right? And you're literally trying to snap yourself out of it. Okay, because remember, you have a habit that you've, you've done over and over and over again. And basically, you're really trying to change habit. Okay? And again, sometimes your inner critic is quite loud. I mean, your inner critic, for instance, what does it say to you? There's no point getting above. So how, I mean. how so? Because I never get it. So I, mean. right. I don't want to actually make mistakes. You don't want to make mistakes? I don't like make mistakes. Is it a fear of failure you have? Okay. Because as a kid, like, I used to go walking with my dad. Do you know what I mean? Right. And he's all mad like for everything done right. Right. Because I was a kid now, till to, to, to this day, I don't do anything that I know I'm going to do wrong. OK. So if it's, if it's not perfect, it's not allowed? Yeah. Like, I'm at all my life, do you know what I mean? I've done three years of it. Right. And I then just left it because I didn't like it. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like, you like your job or the TV crew like their job. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And, like, what, I, what I'd like to do is work for homeless people. OK. Do you know what I mean? And not everything has to be perfect, so I'm okay. never that. Paul had been homeless for four years. He's currently living in a temporary hostel. Now with the new baby, he needs to find a job and a permanent place to live. Hello, I was just thinking about your flat in uh, the Evening Herald. See, so I can't get them because I'm homeless. I was just wondering if you took rent allowance. All right, thanks. Uh, I was just wondering if you took social welfare. All right, thanks. No, I'm just waiting till I get out of uh, see the house to get a job, like, until I can get a flat. And then I'll be, like, I'll be walking. All right, thank you. The only reason I haven't got a job is because of I'm homeless and no one will take me on. And no one will give me a flat because I'm homeless. Because as soon as you hear homeless, that's it. Or rent allowance. As soon as you say rent allowance, I'm like, no, I don't want to. Finally, having called various agents, Paul manages to get an interview for a flat in Dublin city centre. Um, are you working, Paul? No. No, not at the moment. I have to get back in. Like, I'm a third year plaster. I just have to get back early. 
Right, Paul, just mind the paint there. This apartment has just been vacated. So we're actually having it decorated because we, we manage the apartment. It's okay. lovely, it's nice and big. That's what I want, it was the sitting room, the light in the bedroom. So we could have the baby in the bedroom and whatever, sit out in the sitting room. Well, it's perfect. Do you take rent allowance? No. Um, we do accept yeah. rent allowance, yes, we do. Um, well, in general now, Paul, we would have to check out your references. We would need, well, obviously you're not working at the moment, mm. but maybe a past employer, and That's we would dad. need your, 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 your dad. Your dad's yeah. Generally, we would need um, an employer reference, um, a previous landlord if they had it, and a bank statement. And then we would check out those references and also liaise with the landlord, because the landlords may have an opinion on who, who they want in the apartment as well. There's a huge demand, as you've seen this morning, there was quite a lot of people outside waiting to, to view this apartment. So if they're not working, you know, we have to ensure that the rent is going to be paid for the landlord, because obviously we're acting on behalf of the landlord, so we have to ensure that, you know, they can pay the rent. The competition, that's the only thing. It's about 100 people outside right this flat, so I probably won't go. Back at Kapoor, the group are brought outside to practice what they've learned about communication and working as part of a team. This afternoon's activities are led by adventure instructor Hugh. You're going to be doing things that are using team skills, all right? So basically, you're going to be working together as groups. We're going to have uh, the significance of the Crypto Factor games is all to do with mainly with teamwork and using some of the skills that they've been given over the last couple of weekends, and particularly with communicating. So try and do it without saying anything, all right? And I want you to line up in order of... Height. Hair length. So actually giving directions and stuff like that by using their body language. And that's, I think that's very appropriate for some folks here. And can people take direction? Um, can they listen to what's been said? Or is it three or four people talking at the one time and trying to achieve the end result? Some people can come across sometimes as being quite dominant, but unless they worked as a team here, the exercise didn't work, so they had to all work as a team. With, there are a number of ob uh, items that are all shaped, different shapes. If you put them together, they will form a square. They, will they form brought a square. out interaction skills, okay? The opportunity to, to plan, to listen to each other, to, to make decisions. A little bit of leadership comes out in some of these things as well, or not, you know? Um, you're never sure exactly how it's going to work but you want to give the, facilitate the opportunity for things to happen, you know. Each team is trying to fill their bucket with as many balls as they can. The only time you can touch a ball is when you are putting it into one of your team's gutters. Now, each person on the team gets one of these. Move your feet. No, nope, got to go around the post over there. Don't move. Keep going, keep going. Ah. I'm going to be hard. Yeah. Keep, 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 keep. They all got to go back. Back, back, back. Start again, start again. Balls drop. I'm playing the gutter ball. Paul just picked up the gutter, threw it down. I'm out of here, I've had it, I'm not doing this anymore, I've tried it, I'm, you know, I'm sick of this. Paul decides to pull out of the afternoon's activities. The pressure of looking for somewhere to live and becoming a father are a lot for an 18-year-old to carry. He heads back to the solitude of his house. When he lived on the streets, he also had a safe haven. Just where they can stay away in town. They can just chill out and now they're bothering me, just leaving, you know. Like, this is my safe place, like, I can come here during the day or at night time, and it could be never anybody else. I was staying here when Peter McFerry took me in, in April. I was, like, staying here, like, every night. It's bad out here, like, if you get caught, like, on the slide, that's it. You could end up there tomorrow, like, if you hadn't got a place like this off the hour away, out of town or not. You could be asleep somewhere, and just, just, now the gang you know, is locked out of the face or out of it. Just kick the face out if I'm not. Just for the laugh, like, that's the worst, like, of it. Because I sleep on the streets, they think they're better than you because of, or they have a gap. Like, I'm on the streets since I'm 14. All I know now is the street life. Do you know what I mean? I don't know any of the life. But all I knew before, like, I actually copped on a shoplifting every single day just to get food or get clothes or new boomers. I didn't care, do you know what I mean? But now I do, because I want to, because the child now coming along, I just want to, I just don't want to be in the life anymore. Paul has the opportunity to improve his reading and writing on this course, which would improve his life. Now his disruptions within the group may result in him leaving the course. 
he can't afford to do this for himself or his son. The tutors decide to go down and speak to Paul. I only see him on the uh, Sunday. Then I had to leave him again. He's starting to smile. He's starting to get excited and all. And he's smiling. But we're missing all that coming down here. Yeah. You know what I mean? We're being snapped up. Be mad. My dad don't talk to me, man. And do you think maybe then coming down is it too much for you then, Paul? I was trying to ask him what's wrong. So I mean, I woke up this morning and said, right, the girl on me. So I mean, it only takes the least little thing to set me off. So I mean, and then when I deal, we just get all annoyed and I just, I don't want to do harm. Paul has a lot going on and being here for the weekend he's missing various different things and I suppose Paul's at a stage in his life where a lot has happened very quickly. He's a new dad, he's now involved in this series, he's trying to focus on his education and I suppose his attention might be divided in so many areas that it's very difficult for him to concentrate on one area. You can take time out, maybe come up at three o'clock and see and tomorrow, but if you decide, gosh, you know what, maybe it is getting a bit much, maybe looking at it again. With any group, it is important that one person doesn't become the whole focus of the group. That's one of the things we looked at in week one. There has to be a group contract. It has to be something that the group and you agree with, because when you're working, we're not working individually. They are working as a group. The rest of the group head out for a walk in an attempt to relieve the tension of the afternoon's earlier activities. Meanwhile, Paul continues to take some time out to contemplate the decisions he faces. I think Paul came down Friday. I know was Paul on the bus was very quiet. Actually, I didn't even think he was on the bus until we were just near Kapur. I could see in his eyes he had there was something on his mind, so I think things just got on top of him. I, I did approach him and I said to him, you know, Paul, I said, there is another 10 of us here. I said, and we are all on your side, and you can talk to any one of us, take us one side if you feel like you want to talk. <laughs> and Paul was missing for class. I felt we were all going to miss out on something because the fact that Paul wasn't there. Now, whether you, you do nothing in class, it, it's irrelevant. It's just the presence in itself creates that little bond that we started out with, you know, at the first week. You know, we were all nervous, we all didn't know what each other, and then when you got to know somebody, and if you just take one of them away. The afternoon walk is the subject of a creative writing class in the Belfry. After some time out, Paul decides to rejoin the group. You know, we've been practicing capital letters, we've been practicing full stops, we've been practicing putting stuff into sentences, and now you're seeing things happening that you couldn't do before that you're able to do now. So who would like to start off by reading out the piece? Olive. Great, thanks, Olive. It was lovely to go walking today, to see the beautiful roaming hills in the distance, and to feel the leaves underfoot, the skeletons of the trees, so mystical with mist-like blankets surrounding. All the trees, surrounding all the trees. Peace and serenity I will always hold dear to me. I didn't think I'd be feeling as confident. Maybe I'm getting so much out of as I am getting out of it. So um, I actually have a flair for it now, which I didn't even think I could, I could write a sentence. So I, I actually like it and I'm a good writer. And before I would have said I can't write. It's like I can't spell, I wouldn't even make an attempt to spell. I was hoping to get a sight of a deer but alas, not this time. I am back in class now and trying to get down what I felt and saw. I'd like to start writing a bit, you know, maybe try my hand in a bit of poetry or something, songwriting or something like that, which I would never have attempted before because of the spell, and I wouldn't be able to write my own writing, you know. When it comes down to it, it's, you've got to want it, you've got to help yourself, you have to get out there. You can go for adult education in any community in Ireland. It's there, now I will, Find a place for you to be educated, but you have to want it. Listening to the sound of running water on the river, the peace you feel within yourself, I think it is nice for the brain to settle with nature. I just hope the rest of us felt the same. So as they say, it's nice to be with nature. Thanks, Andrew. Excellent. Thank Fantastic. Like Paul, the motivating factor in Andrew's life is his son, Ross. Andrew has always tried to encourage Ross and his self-confidence. When Andrew decided to start the course, like many teenage kids, it was difficult for his son to understand why his dad was going back to learning. 
He's probably trying to think, well, why is my dad going back to school? Is he nuts or what? You know? So, through talking to him in the last week, I think there is a little bit of a change. I think he... OK, he said he was proud of me going back to school, but I think now he, he understands a little bit more. Try to have another go in the desert. It happens brutal. Ross just turning 14. Apparently, he got assessed last year, the year before. He has a slight little bit of dyslexic. Wouldn't be as strong as mine. So it's great to see that in the education system nowadays, that a child of his age could be spotted. Whereas in my time, it, it just walked by us, you know, so it can be caught and it can be dealt with. And it can help other people as well, because there's so many ways of learning. If you can't learn one way, they can learn you another way. There is a, apparently a genetic in, in dyslexic. It, it follows through the genes, and it's more strong on, on the male side than it is on the female side. So it's kind of like hereditary. So Ross would have in, probably inherited it from me. Uh, so I'll have to apologise for that, son. Andrew, the parent, has dyslexia, and his, and his son has dyslexia. I mean, depending on how you view it, it could be both an opportunity or a conflict. It's how you handle the challenges that life gives you. And dyslexia is a challenge. And how does Andrew role model that for his son and saying, well, son, I have dyslexia, and this is how I went about it. And his father, he, his son could look up to him and say, well, Ginny Mac, Dad, yeah, you did it. And he's done that for his son. He's now shown the road and shown the way how his son can conquer this. It's Saturday night at Kapoor, and this weekend's special guest is Eurovision winner, Paul Harrington. I was 16 and so were you, and we lived next door on the avenue. Tonight's sing-along is an opportunity for the group to bond, and also for them to build on their communication skills and their self-confidence. all we did, listening to those songs on the radio. It's nice over the weeks for people to shine with their various different talents. And anyone who's particularly musical or likes to sing, it'll be a, a great opportunity for them to show that off tonight. Singing songs and telling jokes in a club. I think what I got out of course so far is, like, I'm built, my confidence is built more, and I, like, I didn't try to read out belt. Yeah, but I, I have to do that. <laughs> Be a falling leaf at the dawning of the day. On Grafton Street in November. We... No one will ever have a voice like Leo Kelly. He's my favourite singer. My family used to buy the yappies every week when I was a child growing up. And so I, I used to get them and put them up and close them. I claimed them as my own, you know. The words of passion's play. You leave us with the magic in your voice, the love of your songs, your lyrics, your poetry, one's own interest, the power in your voice, the change you chose, your expression your feelings, your determination. You cultivate the people of our land, your land, Ireland. A tribute to Luke Kelly, poem by Vincent Gaffin. It took me four weeks to write the poem. That, that was just leaving the paper on the, on the table with a, with a pen and a dictionary. And well, as I was still doing other things and going out and getting grouse and kept coming back and... It was determ more determination than nothing else, you know, that we wrote the poem. When I started showing other people and they were telling me how good it was, I felt really good with myself, you know, I tell I really achieved something here, you know, I didn't... I'd done something that I didn't, didn't think I could, could, could do, you know. On the quiet street where old ghosts meet, I see her walking now. If we could find, um, say, 
even the classes on, on free out of work, we do it. And the way we're shaking during the week, if we can do that in here, and look at one of the cars, like creative cars, we'll be able to push myself a lot better, you know, that before, you know. And God knows what'll happen, you know, down that road, you know. Made of clay when the angels will declare he lost his wings at the dawn of day. If you would like to improve your reading, writing and numeracy, call the National Adult Literacy Agency on free phone 1-800-2020-65. That's 1-800-2020-65. Five weeks ago, we took 11 hopefuls away on a unique eight weekend course that would aim to change their lives forever. This promises to be an exciting journey for each one of us. I don't want to be different, like I want to be able to spell and not being embarrassed. I'm going down there to learn from each other, me. All 11 have difficulties with their reading and writing. My bank manager never knew I couldn't write. My accountant never knew I couldn't write. You can take what you like from everybody that sits down and talks to you, but it's yourself that's the teacher. Well, how the confidence there to, to listen and to learn? But you can't hear what the woman is saying. Can I say strong enough? No. It's can I, can I do it?